What's poppin' everybody? This is the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins, and we're continuing Infinity Week, where we're knocking out the remainder of Season 2 of Infinity Train, or Book 2, whichever you guys want to call it. But today's episode, man, we're close. We're so damn close. Today's episode is going to be called The Wasteland. Ooh, and it's a good one, too. That's my little first thought, spoiler, whatever you want to call it. But y'all know the usual routine if you guys fuck with us on a daily we're going to toss it over to Alex Payne so he can give us the episode breakdown before we start breaking it down. So, Alex, what happens in this episode? Well, I mean, the, the, the description of this episode is really simple because it, it continues off from the last, from the end of the last one when Jesse went through the portal and went home and Tulip is standing there and the flex start chasing her down and they end up on the roof of the train. And what while they were running, I, I can't remember what caused it, but basically, um, Tulip and Mace got hand, handcuffed, like Mace handcuffed Tulip to him. And then this big piece of the train was coming and they went run. They went run. They went running. And basically, Mace got cut in half. Ooh. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to get this real. Um, and basically, they're in the wasteland. Um, outside of the train and Mace is basically breaking Tulip down psychologically as he's dying and they just have this big long dialogue between them like there's not really much more to say about the episode than that in terms of describing the plot now my first thought is I feel like I feel like this episode is very I guess unique because this, I feel like this is the first episode where it's just been two people having a big long discussion, and I just, I just love the friggin', I just love, I don't know how to describe it, but I just love friggin' Mace's low key psycho and low key authoritative as fuck tone throughout the entire. Yeah, thing. and, and like, that's the whole, that's the whole portrayal of Mace throughout this entire season, and even through some of season one too, where he was dealing with her. In season one, it's just like, Mace? He just wants to enforce that law, okay? Mace <laughs> is a motherfucking dictator, okay? Obviously, I separated those words for a reason. But it's just like, man, this dude is a real villain. And this episode definitely portrayed it. He freaking psychologically was tormenting that motherfucking kid, yo. It's just like, damn, you a grown-ass man, okay? I know she broke the law, and she's not. she's necessarily not hurting anybody. At least, I mean, no, she's not. She can be an asshole, but she's not killing nobody out there. <laughs> so it's just like, man, go easy. Let her do her own thing. She wants to be free. But this dude, he was like, nah, uh, I got to enforce that law, cuh. Okay. <laughs> so it's just like, man, whoo. But Mace really showed his ass in this episode, which is a good thing. And I mean that figuratively, of course. <laughs> but I do like it that he said one line. And listen. For the people who've been fucking with us, or I'm sorry, the one person who's probably been watching us through this whole thing, it's just like, man, this dude, I had it right on the money, and this dude agrees. Thank you for agreeing with me, Mace. Tulip is motherfucking Jess's girlfriend, and, you know, vice versa, okay? Because he obviously was fucking with her. He was fucking with her head. He's like, oh, what's the matter? You lost your boyfriend? And it's like, ah! <laughs> Listen, I knew I wasn't the only one who thought that. Thank you, Mr. Mace. I'll fuck with you now, homie. But, but it's just like, man, it's just that one line. I was like, yeah, listen, I fuck with you, dude. Because uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who was thinking that. But it's just like their bond, man, is so tight. Anyway, um, I guess we could slip into moments here. Like I said, the main portion is of this episode is dialogue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now... I got to say I love Tulip's feisty-ass personality. She motherfucking grabbed his ass. She's like, I'm going to get off this motherfucking train. Obviously, she wasn't cussing in the motherfucker, but she's like, <laughs> I'm going to get off this train. I'm going to make a way. And she's like so damn persistent, even though there is no way. And this guy knows because there ain't no way of getting off this motherfucker realistically. How is she going to find it? Who knows? She doesn't have a number. She can't create a portal. And even if she could, she couldn't go through the damn portal. So it's just like, man, there is this guy speaking the absolute truth. Now, the whole freaking psychological torture when he's talking to her, I'm like, why was the mirror car created? You know, basically trying to get into her head, trying to make her think. It's like he's basically telling her, yo, you're stuck on this bitch. 
there is no way off of here. And he's not lying. And he's like, that's all you're going to be is a reflection. Your path, your destiny is chosen for you. And that's some motherfucking anime talk right there, man. I, I fuck with Mace Bat. <laughs> I'm like, man, this motherfucker been watching too much motherfucking Naruto and motherfucking, uh, what's that dude named? Itachi and shit. Your destiny is made yeah. for you, ho. So it was like, follow that <laughs> shit. Listen, so, I love, like, go ahead. I love, I love the moment where, like, right after, you know, he's cutting off, they first down, down. First of all, I want to mention, I love the fact that they was able to slip in blood in this episode through a friggin' um, what, I guess, loophole, because you see Homeboy cut in half, and you see this puddle of blood that just friggin' there, and you dra- and her dragging him, and just more of this silver, because we all know what that silver stuff is. That's his blood. Homeboy yeah. got cut in half, and he was yeah. like coughing up and spitting up blood and everything, too. But all right. because it's silver, it's silver and um, chrome blood, it comes through and they can't and they could do it with no problem. So I just love, <laughs> so I just love that they could have slipped that in. Cause listen, that was a freaking, that was a lot of freaking blood on that floor. She was drying it. While you see the puddle just carrying on. If that was a regular blood, that would have never happened. But um, I, I just don't see, and maybe maybe I'm somewhat wrong with this. I just don't see how what Mace was seeing was hoping to accomplish by handcuffing her. Like, yo, you can barely walk, dude. You can't walk at all. She's dragging your ass. So <laughs> but he handcuffed her thinking, before that when they was on no, top of the train. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, though. Like, what is he going to do? He's pretty much defenseless. Really? Because she's <laughs> in I, control. She can walk. <laughs> but I love, though, how... Um, and this is what I was going to get at before I started on the blood um, thing, is when... She was first trying to break off the handcuff and everything, and he just starts singing that song and shit, and it was just so creepy and intense and, like, just psychotic and just the way it sounded. Like, I thought that was really, um, I guess, epic in a way. What the fuck? What song was he singing? It was was um, a song about, like, Jesse and them, right? Yeah, it was like, um, I think, like, something about um, a train coming or whatever and saying that, like, um, a boy got on the train and left a little sliver girl behind or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That totally slipped my mind, man. And <laughs> but I, I, I just began to love ahead. that moment, though. Like, okay. just because of the way he sounded and everything and just the fact that this, this nigga bust out a cold, um, calculated song on her. Right, and this motherfucker dying at the same time. <laughs> that shows you how ruthless this dude is, man. This dude is psychotic. Okay, I don't care what nobody say. I give him... <laughs> Huge villain points right there. <laughs> but um, I do have to say this, man. It's just a whole scene where Sulip's freaking running from those guys. And I mentioned it yesterday. Alan Dracula is useless as shit. Okay? <laughs> and, and, and you know what? I will give them the credit of he's useless for a reason. Because if Alan Dracula can uh, do what he want and made it 100% useful to Tulip and Jesse and them, this episode wouldn't have been as good as it was because Alan Dracula really realistically could have fucked them all up. Okay? That's that's no doubt. He could have he could have just ended that shit until it would have gotten away fair and square. But the fact that he just goes along with who up and them and he, he just like you like I said, does what he wants. You know, he's not going to shoot no laser beams at the flex or none. He's not going to freaking freeze their feet like he did Jesse and shit. He's not going to do that. If anything, he might make the trip more difficult for him, okay? Because they got to freaking stop behind and let him through doors and shit. And she she was hollering at him. I don't know if it was this episode or the episode before. She's like, come on, Alan Dracula. And no, it was this one when they was when when she was running on the Adler wheel thing that he made. Yeah. And he just disappeared. Yeah. And it's just like, man, come on, man. But I do have to say this, though. We talked about... Mace, how, how manipulative he is. We got to talk about the final fight scene and just Tulip's feistiness, though. And it's like, I'll be honest. Okay, I'm a big cartoon, not cartoon, but anime buff, okay? And I can't say I'm like the, a big pundit of cartoons or anime, even though my name is the cartoon kid. That's just me being honest. There's a lot of people out there who watch way more shit than I do. But me personally, it's very rare if I'll see a female protagonist in cartoon or anime. They're out there for sure. But I will say, seeing this cartoon, and now that it's at the forefront of my mind, this is one of the cartoons that I will say with the female protagonist, man, 
they made that bitch boss this shit, yo. Because Tulip was not going, yo. Or Metal Tulip, rather. She was not going. She like, I'm getting off this motherfucking train, man. I'm living my own life. I'm going to make me away. And then I was that boss-ass fight scene at the end where the motherfucking, um, she was using, um, that was that, what the fuck is that shit called? The harpoon thingy? The grappling. Where she was like, the grappling yeah, hook. the grappling hook. The grappling hook. And man, it's just like, man, you see her and Mace and shit, you know, basically duking it out. And she's trying to motherfucking um, get uh, rid of Mace and whatnot. And then, you know, they're basically both free falling. It's like, yo, I'm basically falling to my death. But you know what? I'm taking your ass with me. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> going down, boy. Awesome. And then she just friggin' headbutts him and then swings him into the wheel and basically kills that nigga. Yo, she freaking grinded his ass against that shit Mortal Kombat style, yo. I don't give <laughs> a fuck what nobody say. That shit was fire, okay? For a Cartoon Network show, bro. This ain't not no adult <laughs> swim. This is a Cartoon Network show. She fatality that motherfucker. I don't care what nobody say. That shit was fire, okay? Y'all gonna see Motherfucker and the cartoon kid Ray Rollins motherfucking figuratively bust a nut over this show. I'm fucking with it hard. Y'all don't understand, man. But that's my main moments of this episode. <laughs> we gotta get into final <laughs> reviews, man. So we can do these last two. Okay, because I'm ready. So I'm gonna leave it all to you. You can go first, and then I'm gonna go. I think we hit a lot of the high points in the moments. So I don't think I no, need to mention too much. I'll just say that. The pacing in such, because for a dialogue-heavy episode, and purely that's it, this episode felt like so much happened and it didn't feel drug out long or any of that. No, shit. not at all. Not at all. And I, that, that's like a really, um, hats off to you. And I guess you could say the third car was kind of the same way, because that didn't feel empty right. or nothing either. But um, the psychological torture was great. Everything about this episode was just really great to me. Um, Man, I'd so love listen. to see this shit if this was a Dolph Swim cartoon. I ain't even <laughs> But go ahead, I'm talking too much. Go ahead. And listen, I'll even say this to your point about the uh, female protagonists, um, metal tulip in this one and regular tulip in the first one. They're they totally showed, different. They, it, not even just that, like they showed how to actually have a female protagonist without it being a female protagonist. Right. Like. The only thing female about them was the way they looked. Like they didn't, they didn't, they never focused on the fact that like girl, 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 here's a girl. This is a female. Like they never focused on that fact. You know it's what? Like, Fun they fact. They just happen to be women. And I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean, obviously, you know, they could have done this because of like you know their kids and whatnot. But you haven't seen either one of them in a the dress. I don't know. Like the, when you think like a girl character. You may think, oh, there might be in a dress or a skirt or whatnot. Who knows? But, like, uh, if I remember correctly, regular Tulip, she wore, like, jeans and, like, a sweatshirt. And Metal Tulip, you know, she's not in a girly outfit. And you can say both of them, in a sense, have tomboy personas, too, which is interesting. Like, you don't, don't normally see that. that. That's just my opinion. But I'm just like, man. No, so you see, you see that a lot, but it's morally based because they, they always try to jam it down. So this is a girl I could do with the boys do instead of it just being. You know what? Girl Perfect just example. Do Perfect example. Do. Perfect <laughs> example. I know I'm just shitting all, not shitting all over your review, but I'm interrupting you a lot. Legend of Korra. That's the only cartoon. And like I said, I don't watch a lot of them because I'm just basically getting into this shit like now. But Legend of Korra is perfect example. It's like, oh, we got to have a female avatar. And not only that, you can see, see that they were really pushing the SJW shit a lot because near and then, here comes the spoiler, guys. Here we go. Three, two, one. Cora and Asami end up together, you know, and they're lesbians. It, you know, that's how it portrayed. They're walking into the spear world with their holding hands and shit. And it's just like, eh, okay. Yeah, you guys are really trying to not push an agenda, <laughs> but you guys are trying to show like, oh, yeah, we're with the SJW culture. Like, Tulip, she's not portrayed. Or, or metal tulip rather she's not portrayed as a as a regular girl you know in her teenage years like 13 years old thinking about boys and shit like that nah she's wants her motherfucking superpower deer motherfucking and she's like basically fuck <laughs> jesse I, i'm getting to be hanging with alan dracula but go ahead continue your review i'm just i'll, I'll stop trying to interrupt you now <clears throat> no but i think everything about this episode was great and really well done so listen I hit. I intentionally hit. I mean, I guess granted, I couldn't give that one really too much higher than that anyway. But 
I hit yesterday's episode with an eight purely because I already knew that I was gonna hit this episode with a nice solid nine out of ten. Ooh, look at you, boy. Okay, and see, and it's just like, listen, our reviews ain't shit. We ain't nobody. Okay, we're not pundits. At least I'm not. Alex can probably speak more to this than I can. But I'm not a pundit of no cartoons or whatnot. So, you know, everybody's entitled to have their own opinions on certain episodes of cartoons. However, seeing that you and I are on the same path and whatnot regarding this episode, um, my rating is not going to be too far off from yours. So and, and for those who want to leave their opinions down in the comments box below, tell us you like this episode or hate it. You know, go ahead, man, because we're looking at them shits all the time. So. I want to see what you guys think of this episode. Now, let me get on to what I got to say. It's pretty much the same shit you said. <laughs> you know, this episode, for it being a dialogue-heavy episode, a lot of shit happened. Obviously, you had the scenes with Tula fighting with the Flex in the beginning, right? And, you know, Alan Jack obviously showing his uselessness. And then that leads them to the whole wasteland area of the train. You know, Tulip and Mace have their big dialogue scene where Tula basically says, yo, I'm going to motherfucking do this shit. I'm going to get off this train. She hits him with that fucking Naruto speech. I'm going to make a way, cut. Huh? Okay? And there ain't nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> and then, obviously, we have the two ending episodes. Uh, ending episodes. The ending scene where you see them basically fighting. And you see the first death, as far as I'm aware, on fucking Cartoon Network. Well, I, I, it's probably not the first death, but she fucking went, like I said, Mortal Kombat stage fatality that dude, yo. I don't care what no... She grinded his face. Yo, that's how <laughs> Tool is not a fucking girl, yo. I mean, she is, but she's not like your regular girl protagonist. All I gotta say is Cartoon Network, they're doing their motherfucking thing with this Infinity Train, and I'm glad you found this shit, and you put us onto this shit. The regulars who mess with us, they know we did this shit for just a random new This Week episode where we just... We're gonna do a one episode review and probably going to be done with it but we made this a regular series on this channel so if season three comes out man you best believe this shit's going to be on the cartoon kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily baby that's a listen i'm putting my bid in for that shit right now like i was saying in this episode though uh, um cartoon network really did their shit especially in this episode and i, I already knew i was going to give this one a high rating as well like simply because you can see the realism in it. And you can see, like, Tulip finally, in a sense, admits that, you know, Jesse's a homie. And she was going to motherfucking get off the train to be with him, to be her own person and shit. And, you know, her and Alan Dracula were going to meet up with Jesse. So it's just like, man, you can see that she finally really cares for this dude. And I'm not going to say in a boyfriend, girlfriend type situation, even though Mace made that joke. You know, like I said, he gets extra points from me for basically seeing what I saw a few episodes ago. But I got to say this, man. Cartoon Network, creators of Infinity Train, y'all doing that shit. Y'all doing y'all shit. And I fucking thank y'all for creating this entertainment for me and my buddy and all my fellow cartoon loving homies out there. So for my review of Infinity Train Season 2, Episode 8, The Wasteland, I'm going to give it, I'm going to hit it with an 8.5. 8.5, simply because they got a lot done in such a small time frame that most cartoons don't manage to do. One, they had me feeling for the characters. It's like, oh, damn. Simply because they left off in a, in a good moment, a good, nice cliffhanging spot of episode seven. You know, flip, uh, I'm going to say the flicks. The flex basically had Tulip Corner. They finna get her ass, okay? <laughs> and then it picks up right after that. Nice fucking cliffhanger on the previous episode. Leading to that with this episode, as soon as it comes on, Automatic action, you know, Tulip trying to get away from the flex, freaking mental torture in the wasteland, and obviously that nice fight scene at the end. So, good 8.5 out of 10 for this episode for me, and Alex Payne hits this with a nice 9 out of 10. So, that has been our review for Season 2, Episode 8 of Infinity Train called The Wasteland. I'm the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins, he's Alex Payne, and this is the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily, baby. Tell us all your thoughts on this episode down in the comments box below. Tell us if you liked it. Tell us if you hate it. And tell us what you would rate it. Y'all know what we usually say at the end when we're closing this out. We will see you when we see you. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>